Thank you very much, Dale, and hello, everyone. It's such an honor to be here this evening amongst so many colleagues and friends, and for some of us, at least, to be back together in the same environment. And welcome to all those people who've joined us virtually. This is truly a momentous occasion for the Axial SPA community. And by that, I don't mean just people living with Axial SPA or healthcare professionals who are striving to improve the quality of life for patients with Axial SPA, but more importantly, all of those patients who have Axial SPA but don't know that, who have been hampered on their delay on their journey to diagnosis. This is really an ambitious project, but we have the knowledge, we have the resources, and we have the ambition, and we can do it, but we need your support. Little did I think when we sat down in Amsterdam two years ago, and it's almost two years to the day when Dale, Raj, and myself sat down and sketched out this program, that it would come to fruition in such an enlightening way. This is truly a professional, outstanding document which outlines the key barriers to diagnosis and the key solutions. And we're very, very honored that we've been able to put together such an ambitious program. And running through the journey from onset of symptoms to diagnosis, there are really three key areas for transformation, which focus on education, pathway development, and diagnostics. I'm just going to share some aspects of this with you briefly. In primary care, we recognize that the majority of patients have a delay in approaching their general practitioner or their first contact healthcare professionals. Approximately 60% see their healthcare professional within one year of symptom onset, but conversely, 20% wait for more than 10 years for a diagnosis. So there's clearly an impasse between presentation in primary care and subsequent diagnosis. And there are many reasons for this, but one of them is because the consistent failure to recognize the key features of axial spondyloarthritis in primary care. We want to make that happen. We want to change the processes so that when patients come to their GP with back pain, which has clinical characteristics suspicious for axial SPA, that's recognized and they're referred promptly. And in the documents, you see many, many potential solutions which involve IT and other pathways. In secondary care, we have a similar issue whereby many of our patients become embedded in other healthcare systems or other healthcare services, perhaps in ophthalmology, gastroenterology, dermatology. We need to ensure that processes are in place to swiftly refer those patients through to rheumatology so that they can acquire their diagnosis. So we will need pathways in secondary care. We'll need to educate our colleagues in secondary care in order to make this happen. And finally, within rheumatology and within musculoskeletal radiology services, we need to ensure that protocols are in place to enable patients to access the appropriate imaging and this imaging is interpreted by someone who's trained as a musculoskeletal radiologist with specialist knowledge in axial spondyloarthritis. This requires close cooperation between rheumatology and radiology, the establishment of multidisciplinary teams, and maybe tertiary referral pathways for complex or challenging cases. Undoubtedly, we have a huge amount of work to do, but we have the resources, we've got the ambition, and we've got the ability. So we need everyone to pull together to act on Axial SPA and make this a reality. Thank you for your attention.